Good morning, welcome to London Line Church. Today, the 21st of November 2021. Let's commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are with us, Lord. We can never run away from you, and we thank you, God, that you are our Father. You are always watching over us. And we commit ourselves to you, Lord, to worship you, to praise you this day. Bless us this day, Lord, in all that we do. We pray for your presence to be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Psalm 142. 142. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint before Him. Before Him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is You who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. Look to my right and see, no one is concerned for me. I have no refuge, no one cares for my life. I cry to you, O Lord. You say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I might praise your name. Then the righteous will gather around me, because of your goodness. Me. Indeed, may we experience the goodness of God to each and every one of us this day. Let's rise to worship Him. We thank God that He is a good God, good to all who belong to Him. God is good. Oh, 
and let us pray. Father, we are thankful for your goodness, your faithfulness towards God, that you take care of us and provide for us, and you watch over us regardless of how we are to you. We thank you, Father, that you are always taking care of us. And we want to give this in appreciation of all that you've done for us and all that you will yet do for us, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please uh, bank into the church account and then let me know. Praise the Lord. He is always good, no matter what the circumstances are on this earth. So today we want to look at the life of uh, Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel. Uh, Jacob means uh, supplanter uh, or, or deceiver or crook, <laughs> right? But his name was later changed to Israel, prince with God. After he had wrestled with the angel of the Lord, right, and, and asked for a blessing, his name was then changed from Jacob to Israel because he had persevered with God. Right? He had gone away for so many years and then returned home. And, uh, you know, before he went away, he said, If you bring me back to this place, you will be my God. <laughs> huh? You will be my God in this place and indeed he was brought back uh, he came back to the land to the inheritance that his father his that God uh, intended for him to have right so when we are submitted to him we will receive God's blessing God's inheritance let's turn to Genesis 28 uh, and we will we will see that. Uh, verse 1. So Isaac called for Jacob, blessed them, called for his sons, uh, and, uh, and commanded Jacob, do not marry a Canaanite woman. Uh, because if we look back just one verse uh, to the last chapter, and the last verse, which says, uh, in verse uh, 46, then Rebekah said to Isaac, I am disgusted with living because of these Hittite women uh, that Esau had married. Uh, if Jacob takes a wife from among the women of this land, from Hittite women like these, my life will not be worth living. Uh, my life will not be worth living. It was so terrible. Why? Because they were idolatrous. Uh, they worshipped idols and they, are, they had a, a culture uh, and standards uh, that were not holy, that were not clean uh, before God. And also before, right, Rebecca. That's why she, she told Isaac, my life will not be worth living. <laughs> if Jacob takes a, a wife from among these local women, uh, no standard at all. So, uh, Isaac called him, blessed him, and commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once. Uh, go at once to Padam Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May He give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien. The land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way. He went to Padam Aram to Laban son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. Now Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him to Adam Aram to take a wife from there. And when he blessed him, he commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman. 
And Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Adam and Adam. Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father, Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Nab Nabaioth, uh, and daughter of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. Jacob left Bathsheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, and its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you and your offspring. And I will bring back to you to this land. I will not leave you until I've done what I've promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on he called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. We thank you Lord for your word and we ask that you bless it to us, give us understanding. Help us, Lord, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, life was terrible for the mother of Jacob uh, and Esau because of the Canaanite women that Esau had married. Not just one, uh, uh, but at least two. Because after he heard that Jacob had gone to his mother's hometown to find a wife, <laughs> he purposely married another Canaanite woman uh, to add to the suffering of his mother. <laughs> uh, so, God already knew that this fellow Esau uh, would be a rebel. He would be a terrible person. And that's why you know, even before he was born, uh, the mother already knew that the younger, uh, the older would serve the younger. And that was prophesied already. God had already told her. And it was seen in, uh, in, 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 uh, in their upbringing, right? That Esau did not respect tradition. Esau did not, uh, was not obedient. Right? He, yeah, he was a person who lived unto himself. Whereas uh, Jacob was obedient and listened uh, to instruction. That uh, was pleasing to his parents. And so we see here in this instance that uh, he goes away to his uncle, his mother's brother's house, in order to marry uh, a girl from there. Uh, basically a cousin. Uh, in those days, uh, you know, it was okay because uh, not so much choice available. <laughs> and especially if you wanted to marry somebody of your own culture and religion. After all, Abraham in, uh, had uh, uh, sent the servant, uh, sent his servant to go and find Rebecca uh, from his father's house. So this was just a 
the repeat of what happened uh, uh, to his parents. So now Jacob is sent to uh, to the same hometown to find a wife, a wife that would be agreeable in culture and religion. Right? And so he went. Uh, in verse seven, it says. And Jacob obeyed his father and mother. Right? Uh, as in the uh, <coughs> fourth command, honor your father and your mother. Uh, that it may go well with you, that you may live a long life. Honor your father and mother. And so Jacob, this is <laughs> hundreds of years before the Ten Commandments were given. But he in essence, obeyed it. Right? He obeyed his father and mother. He ordered his father and mother's wishes. And he set off. Now, he was not somebody who was used to going out on his own, being independent. You know, he stayed around the tents. He was a, a homeboy, huh? a mother's child, a mother's boy. But he nevertheless, he obeyed. He obeyed his father and mother. And he set off. Right? And because the sun had set, he lay down to sleep. He put a stone under his head and slept. Right? And he had a dream. He had a dream. He went to sleep and had a dream. Now you don't have a dream when you're awake. Now that would be a vision. But he had a dream because he went to sleep. And he, his head was resting on this rock. And while he was sleeping, he had this dream of a stairway. A stairway to heaven with angels going up and down. Going up and down. So he, he, he thought, oh, this is the gateway to heaven because her angels go up and down. Right? But spiritually, we know that there is no one single place <laughs> where, uh, where angels descend and ascend. But in order, in, in those days, uh, for well, it worked out for him. Okay, so it was it was God's purpose for him to have this dream because he then woke up, right, and said, "This is the gateway to heaven," right. I was not aware of it. Now God is in this place. He was afraid and said, "This, how awesome is this place? There is none other than the house of God. This is the gateway to heaven. Right? So when he woke, he realized what had happened. Right? But in his dream, what happened? He saw God above the stairway. He saw God. He saw the Lord, I, who, who then declared to him. Uh, he, he probably had no idea. He had never seen God before. He had never heard God before. God had never given him a promise of, of anything at all. Right? So he had no, no idea. But God introduced himself. Uh, God was so kind. God you know, wanted to frighten him. God wanted to make it plain and clear to him who he was. So God declared. I am the Lord, I am Jehovah, I am Yahweh, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. God had appeared to Abraham and to Isaac and now God was appearing to Jacob. This was a, a confirmation of, of the de de descendancy from Abraham. I am the God of your Father Abraham and the God of Isaac, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. And all people on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Now, offspring in English it's singular. Uh, so often it is said that refers to Jesus. That all people on earth will be blessed through you, Jacob, 
and Jesus, your offspring. Right? Because how else can all peoples of the earth be blessed? Uh, except through Jesus, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their offspring, Jesus Christ. In verse 15, it says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to the land. Uh, this is the promise of God. I will be with you. I will watch over you. I will bring you back. I will not leave you. For I will. I will, I will, I will, I will. God himself, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, made these promises to Jacob. I will, I will. Or you could say, I am also. I am with you. I am watching over you. I will bring you back. I will not leave you. I am with you. And Yahweh, God Almighty, with you all the way. And I will bring you back to this land you know, that has been promised to Abraham. With Abraham, uh, God took him out to the night sky and said, Count the stars. <laughs> Your descendants will be as numerous as the stars, uh, which, which are uncountable. You know, 4,000 years ago, maybe you could count about 5,000 stars with, with your own eyes. Nowadays, with, with uh, telescopes of all kinds, you can count millions more stars in the sky. Uh, with technology, the numbers has increased millions of times. With Jacob, your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. <laughs> like the dust. Who can count dust? <laughs> hey, hey, you cannot count dust. You know, what is dust? Dust could be a microscopic particle that you will need a telescope. I mean a microscope or, or even a yeah, electron microscope or, or a, a, a visual microscope. And count? <laughs> Impossible. Right? Even one cubic centimeter of air, you know, let's say one handful of air in our, in our hands, even now, uh, may, may contain a million particles of dust uh, that, that we cannot see, too small to see, right? You know, when we, have the, when we used to have the haze, uh, they, they counted the number of particles uh, above a certain size, only above a certain size. And they, they use that as a standard for air quality. You, because you cannot count everything. Because if you set too high a standard, then it becomes ridiculous. Right? So they use a certain particular size. Uh, and based on that, we have our face masks, uh, which may be 93% effective or the, like the N95, right? 95% effective. But even that, it's not 100%. It's impossible to be 100% effective. Nevertheless, uh, his descendants will be like the dust of the earth. Uncountable. And God said, I will bring you back to this land. Uh, I will not leave you un uh, until I have done what I promised you. Right? God promised him to bring him back. Watch over him. Right? Bring him back. So he, he woke up and in his simple mind, in his simple understanding, you know, that place was where the house of God was. Right? Because he had never seen or experienced God anywhere else. He might have heard about his father Isaac or, uh, you know, and, and his grandfather Abraham how they had met God, how they had experienced God, but he himself had not yet had a personal experience of God until this dream, until this encounter. Right? And so, he was afraid. How awesome is this place? Because this was his first encounter. 
I mean, imagine, you know, seeing a stairway going up to heaven, huh? and the God of your grandfather who, who promised him the land, the whole land of Canaan, appearing. Right? He had heard about it. Now he saw God in his greatness. So he became afraid. Naturally. Huh? Not, not terrified huh? and fearful, huh? not full of darkness. But he was fearful, he was afraid huh? because of the awesomeness of God. Recognizing the God who appeared to Abraham, promised him and, and covenanted with him, and who had a whom Isaac knew, now he knows him. He encounters him, God himself. Right? So early the next morning he took the stone, set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it. Anointed it. It became a, an altar of worship to God. Now, he got a place battle, house of God. Uh, though the city used to be called those. Then he made a vow. This was his response. He made a vow. Right? God gave him promises and his response was a vow. I will, I will, I will. Huh? If God will be with me, I will and will watch over me and take me and so on. On my safe return, the Lord will be my God. The Lord will be my God. This was his declaration. But we know, if you read the next few chapters, you will know that he prayed and God heard his prayers. God blessed him, gave, God gave him wisdom that he was able to become very rich and wealthy so that when he returned to his father's house, and returned to Canaan, the promised land, of his grandfather and father, when he returned, uh, he had many, many sheep, <coughs> goats, he had many, many servants, uh, and of course he had two wives and children. Right? So he was a great family already when he returned. <coughs> right? He, he didn't return empty-handed in any way at all. God had blessed him because he had honored his father and mother. He had obeyed his father and mother and done as they wished, uh, as they had commanded him. Right? So this is God's blessing. When we obey, when we honor our father and mother, there are blessings to be obtained. When we obey God, when we act in faith towards God, God blesses us, God rewards us, uh, and God will never leave us nor forsake us. And we see it here in the life of Jacob. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you go to Sunday school, this is one of the lessons uh, that day. Uh, and and there will be a picture of a, a stairway going to heaven, <laughs> angels ascending, descending, uh, for children to color. Right? Uh, but we don't have coloring sheets uh, for <laughs> for you all today. Huh? But imagine in your mind, seeing the stairway, huh? like an escalator, you know, huh? <coughs> going up and down, <coughs> people, <coughs> angels, <coughs> ascending and descending, huh? coming down to the earth to do the will of God, to minister God's will and purpose to people, right? And taking the trance of people up to heaven, and so on, the requests. So, this was very significant. Huh? God's presence was there. God had never appeared to him before. This was his first encounter with God. And because he had heard from his mother about his father and grandfather's encounters with God, huh? He felt encouraged. Even though he was afraid, he felt encouraged. Because he said, 
Huh? If, if, if you go with me and so on, then I will. Huh? You will be my God. You will be my God here in this land. Huh? Although he had experienced God while he was away, huh, what is important is the land. Because this was the place of God's promise to Abraham, to Isaac, to his to their descendants. And so Jacob is in it comes into that inheritance, the godly inheritance of Abraham. The divine, huh, the eternal covenant of God with Abraham. So Jacob now becomes part of it personally and individually. Before it was the promise to his grandfather, to his father, now it is confirmed to him, to him, that you own that covenant. You have become part of the covenant. You have moved into the covenant, into the promise of God. You are no longer an outsider. Huh? Even though there's this word here, you are an alien in the land. Uh, where is it? Verse 4. Take possession. Huh? So that you may take possession of the land where you now live as an alien, the land God gave to Abraham. Now, this is part of Isaac's uh, uh, command uh, to, to Jacob. Right? That you may take possession of the land. He was confirming the inheritance to Jacob. Right? Confirming it. Right? And this dream was an additional confirmation of that promise. The promise of God's presence uh, to him and to his descendants as numerous as the dust on the earth. Thank you God that you are the God of generations. You are not just the God of our generation or the God of ancestors but you are our personal God. And we thank you, God, that you personally appeared to Jacob <coughs> and confirmed the promise that was given to his grandfather, that you personalized your promises to Jacob to never leave him and to always be with him and to bring him back into his inheritance. Even though he would go away, you would bring him back into the place of blessing. You would bring him back into his inheritance that is forever. We thank you, God, that you have an inheritance for each one of us that you want us to enter into, that you want to bring us back into, no matter where we have gone, whatever we have done, how far we are away from you, you want to bring us back to yourself, to the place of blessing, to the place of promise, to the place where you will be our God. We thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. And what you have promised, you will do. And so, Father, we commit everyone here to be, to be in the promises of the faithful one. God Almighty, the God of heaven and earth, the God who created all that exists. We pray, Father, that we would be in the place <clears throat> where you are our Lord and God. Keep us there, Father, and let us know your power, your promises, your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that you are God Almighty in heaven and on earth. And we commit to you our country of Malaysia, we thank you, Lord, for the elections in Malacca uh, that, have, uh, that have passed. And we want to pray, Father, you will continue to have your hand upon Malaysia, that Malaysia be to your glory. We thank you, Father, give us a just, righteous government that will exalt you, Lord, will be, be to your glory. We commit ourselves to you, Lord, we pray for your protection. 
We pray for more to be vaccinated and wisdom for the government as far as boosters and other things, other means of uh, overcoming COVID-19. We thank you, Father, <clears throat> your purpose and your will be done in Malaysia as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. We will see you again.